All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Fuji mod, which is being made by form user Well. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build your very own Fuji spacecraft, which was a proposed design back in 2001 by the Japanese National Space Development Agency. And oh my, it is a beautiful little craft which we can thankfully build in here. So let's uh, jump into the VAB and have a look at what we do get. Now let's grab ourselves a Mark 1-3 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then turn on our mod filter, just leaving on Fuji. And we'll have a gander at the first part here, the Fuji Crew Capsule, which will hold two Kerbals inside with a minimum of one crew member to operate. And of course, as a data transmitter, RCS reactor Action wheel, SAS, uh, the typical crew report, 800 electric charge, and 80 mono propellant. And if we take a look at this thing, it is pretty nice looking. Now you can tell here that it is the same width as the Mark 1 3, but uh, it's a lot less tall. It is a very compact little uh, capsule design and does thankfully have an internal view. And oh my, when you're looking through the eyes of a Kerbal, it is um, squishy. You are pretty much right up against the interior of this thing. And uh, fitting, fitting, considering how small this thing is. It's a very nice, compact command pod that, all in all, just looks good. A very nice design to it, just the one singular window. But, of course, we do have the attachment point on the top there for a parachute or a docking node. And, of course, the main attachment point for adding it to your ship. Now, besides this one, we do have another capsule and that is the rescue capsule now this one can actually hold up to six Kerbals again a minimum of one crew member to operate with a built-in data transmitter RCS reaction wheel SAS the usual crew report but this time only 200 electric charge and 20 mono propellant and that's because well as you can see here uh, this thing is well just as thin as the normal crew capsule but now you're fitting four more more Kerbals into it. And uh, yeah, so you gotta lose some resources to fit those extra people inside, and they are even more squishily compacted in there than with the normal one. Now they do get a couple of extra windows so they can at least see outside, but beyond that it's, uh, well, more or less identical to the crew capsule here, and it's just another nice design if you don't mind being very cramped in there. Now let's chuck that off and head down to the fuel tanks category where we have the PAP-7 propellant tank, which is a beautiful fuel tank here, though quite small, only holding 90 liquid fuel and 110 oxidizer. And if we check it onto the, on, uh, the Mark 1-3, there are words. You can see here, it, uh, it has some just magnificent detailing to it. I really do like it. It is, of course, an inline fuel tank, so attachment nodes on the top and bottom. And these spherical tanks with the foiling and all the trusses to hold it all together just looks so good. You really gotta love the design on this thing. Very nice. Now let's pop that off and head to the engines category where we have the PUX-8 rocket motor, and this will have a maximum of 40 kilonewtons in a vacuum, using liquid fuel and oxidizer, and uh, a little bit of gimbling there at 3.5 degrees. And if we pop it on, you can see it is a pretty small rocket engine, but a very, very useful and perfect for those orbital maneuvers. But let's check that thing off and then head down to the next category of command and control where we just have the one P95 RCS thruster block, which of course is, well, an RCS thruster. Not really much else to talk about there, but it is a very, very tiny one. As you can see here, it pretty much disappears into the size and just hugeness comparatively of the Mark 1-3 command pod. But all in all, very nice little thruster block, very good design. It's got a lot of good angles to it that I very much like. It's not big and chunky, it's just right. 
Now yeah, let's check that thing off and then have a look at the structural category where we do have the PGM9 structural section, which does actually hold 100 electric charge and 20 mono propellant. And if we chuck it on here to the Mark 1 3, it is a pretty good little thing. Now, this is meant, uh, if I'm remembering how the order goes, just behind the command pod but before the fuel tanks. And yeah, it is just a, a good little structural section with a bit of extra extra resources in it. A very nice all in all. Now, after that, we have nothing in robotics. In coupling, though, we do have a P3F7 heat shield cover. And this is, well, a big decoupler with an attachment point that goes over the heat shield. And if uh, we pop it onto here, you can see it sort of uh, clips into the Mark 1-3. And that's because, as I said, it's meant to cover the existing heat shield we'll find in thermal here in a moment. But it is a pretty cool part. Nice foiling on the interior and of course having the uh, attachment point on the inside to attach to the heat shield and then this attachment point on the outside to connect to the rest of your rocket always fun now after that we have the p4gu docking port which is a docking node not really much to say about that but if we pop it on there you can see it is quite a small one uh, compared to at least the size of the mark 1-3 but a good usable docking port for you to dock to things and who doesn't love that now after that in payload we have nothing aerodynamics nothing ground nothing but in thermal we get that p3 f7 ablative heat shield which is meant to go with that cover and uh, yeah is a pretty good heat shield there if we pop it onto the mark Mark 1-3 actually does a fit in size-wise with that. And if I actually do go back to coupling real quick and grab the heat shield just to show off how they fit together, we'll pop that baby on. It just goes right over the heat shield to give it a little bit of uh, protection when, you know, not in use. There we are. Now let's pop uh, both of these off. Uh, there we there we go. And then head down to the electrical category where we do have the PW42 1x3 photovoltaic panels, which is a nice deployable solar panel which will produce two electric charge per second. And if we pop it onto our capsule here, uh, is uh, quite a nice little uh, solar panel. If we do extend it out and uh, zoom, there we go. Very good looking thing, very useful for any ship design you're looking to do. And, uh, yeah, let's pop that off, then head down to communication where we have nothing, science nothing, cargo nothing, but in utility we have the final few parts, with the first one being the P4GU parachute, which is... Well, a parachute, and a pretty typical sort of, you know, round parachute for you to use on any ship. And if we pop it onto the Mark 1-3 here, you can see pretty uh, nondescript, just sort of cylindrical object for you to attach onto things and then, you know, pop out a parachute from. Now, the next parachute's a bit more interesting. We have the P4GU Paraglider. So instead of the typical circular chute, it's, you know, rectangular. But all in all, it's still a parachute functioning in uh, the same manner. And if we pop that on here to the Mark 1-3, it's that same sort of cylindrical design, but this time it has a red dot. And that's a thing. So there we go. Now, after that, the next part is the P4 LES Launch Escape System, or Seppuku. And this one, oh, I really love the design of this. You know, we've seen a fair few launch escape systems in our time on this uh, series. This is the coolest looking that I've ever seen. I mean, come on, look at it. It's just magnificent. Rather than just girders with rocket motors on it, it has this beautiful sleek design, the nice little uh, kind of dome on the top, though it has, of course, been a bit squared off there with the rockets, and does actually have two different variations of either this bear version or a truss-mounted version, which, when put onto one of the uh, capsules it's designed for, it looks very good. The trusses fit right along in the line with it, they are magnificent. You really do gotta love this thing. It is quite cool. 
And then our final part that we do have here is the PXX6 orbital module, which will hold four Kerbals on the inside, minimum of one to control and operate, and uh, does have a built-in SAS, the usual crew report, 350 electric charge, and 50 mono propellant. And if we pop it on here, you can see it is quite a beautiful and a large module here. Now, sadly, uh, it, it does have an interior, which is good, but it's recycling the uh, one that we already have for the current habitat module, which I always forget the name of. Let's actually, I want to know this or else it's going to bother me. Why do I always forget the name of you? The Hitchhiker Storage Container. It uses the same interior view as that, which, I mean, hey, at least it still does have something there, but I would love to see a more custom one on this. But all in all, a very cool, useful orbital module to add to any space stations and just has a beautiful design to it. And yeah, that is all the parts for this one. So let's go and have a look at these things out in the world. And I've actually got two ships to show off today. One, of course, we have on the launch pad over here to show off the... Uh, the rescue capsule with all six Kerbals on the interior and, of course, having a gander at the uh, launch system here to also show off the paraglider parachute. But first, let's take a look at the interior view and, uh, like I said, it, uh, it is squishy on the interior of this thing. Now, you can also tell it is a very sort of bare minimum experience with only those a handful of instruments down there and mostly just places for your Kerbals to be shoved in like sardines if we uh, just go over to the next Kerbal there over closer by the instrumentation and a useful fire extinguisher because hey Kerbal pilots or well more specifically me piloting <laughs> and then over to seat uh, the next of uh, the next of uh, the next and yeah yeah it's uh very cramped very cramped on the inside but overall looks good and let us actually activate the launch system here. I would suggest either activating it manually or, of course, adding it to the abort action group. Because if you do rely on uh, just staging it from here, well, it has a built-in decoupler, so it just does that. It doesn't actually function as a launch system. So unless you actually properly add it to the abort sequence, let's revert flight, it will just fly away. But if we uh, either use the abort sequence or simply just uh, right click on this thing and activate, there we go. It has quite a bit of power launching us up into the air. We can then decouple and while we slowly plummet back down so I can actually show the parachute. Oh no, radial out, radial out, there we go. Okay, we're falling now, there goes the parachute. And as you can see, the lovely, more rectangular paraglider. Now, uh, yeah, I mean, it still works as any other parachute, but it's at least something different from the usual circular ones. And yeah, that's really it for that one, so let's head to the tracking station, yes, leave anyways, and head up into orbit where I've got the Fuji spacecraft up here with the module, so we can also take a look at the interiors there, though of course the, uh, the module, like I said, does use the hitchhiker container, but this one, ah, just look, look at how beautiful this whole thing is, it is just a just excellent little system. I do love the designs of everything, and with its kerbalized texturing, it fits in very nicely into the game, and though squishy, does have some fun little internal views for your kerbals to enjoy, and uh, with that, yeah. Okay, but yeah, just a fun little thing, and of course, the module here with the recycled interior, but still, a fun little craft. So if you would like to have a look at this for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, uh, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this episode today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next one. Hopefully, we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.